Good evening. Good, 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 good evening. And I'm saying good evening because I really need to remind myself that no matter what, it's still a good evening. Um, I'm not staying on here long, and, and I don't say that like, you know, the preacher say, you know, I won't be, be before you long, and then they still be up there for 45 minutes. No, I'm really not going to be before you long. Um, I just felt that I needed to release this in this way because, um, and I'm sorry for anyone who doesn't know me, I am... Pastor Theo D.C. Moore um, of Living Sacrifice Outreach Ministries, otherwise known as hashtag LSOM. Um, but I don't want to ever come on here and share things only when it's good. You know, um, I want to just share the realness of living this life and walking it out and I came on because I I just left Kroger, um, which is for some people who may not be familiar with Kroger um, in this part of the, the map. It's a supermarket. OK. And um, I just failed the test. There's no doubt about it. I don't need to go before counsel. I don't need a bunch of opinions. I just failed the test. And um I just kind of wanted to get on here and share the reasons I no, not I believe that I know that I failed it. In a nutshell, my family is going through a major test of our faith where one of our loved ones is um, literally fighting for their lives. And the only thing that we can do is pray, believe, and stand. Pray, believe, stand. That's all we can do. That is all we can do. And for anyone who's ever been in that type of situation, it is a helpless feeling. Nevertheless, um, that's where we are right now, and uh, it's not an issue of whether or not I believe that God can and that he will do what he said he'll do. What I'm battling is my flesh and my emotions that are making me want to freak out, and they are directly combative against my spirit that knows and trusts God. So my spirit is saying, well, you know, we believe God. We know God. We're going to trust. Yes, God going to do it. But the emotions, it's like, ah! I mean, and, and that's putting it lightly. My emotions want to just fall out. My emotions want to cry. Even right now, I'm trying not to. But that's what's going on inside. So all day today, I was struggling, struggling and warring with my spirit and my emotions, with what I know God can do and what I'm afraid God won't do. Even though my spirit is saying, no, no, we believe. But those emotions, I, I'm still in this flesh. So I'm still battling and doing my best to pray, believe, and stand. So all day today, I, I was battling. Um, my family could feel it. My husband could feel it. My children could feel it. Um, I was really trying to push through. Um, went to service today. Had a wonderful service. Um, experience today. Shout out to the Life Center in um, Dunwoody, um, uh, to uh, Apostle um, Buddy and um, Dr. Mary Crum and Pastor Samuel and Ayana Giles. 
you guys uh, was an awesome service and I so appreciated it. And even in that, I was still fighting and battling. So I'm saying all that to say, because the hashtag said this is a quick word. Uh, came home tonight, found out school's canceled because of inclement weather. And um, I, my husband said he heard Trump is supposed to be in town. So, you know, things are going to be crazy. Um, so I said, you know, I got some things I need to get from the supermarket. I don't really feel like going. I was going to go tomorrow. But I said, but if it's raining and it's wet and it's ice, I don't feel like dealing with that. Let me just go tonight. And I didn't feel like going. Went out. Made my list, found everything on my list. First, I was worried that everybody was going to be in a supermarket going crazy, you know, buying up everything. You know how people could be. And um, it was easy breezy. I said, okay, God, thank you. Go on there, check everything off my list. Everything was in stock. God, thank you. I said, okay, I wonder if, you know, the register's going to be closed. I'm going to have to go through the checkout because, you know, that's how they do on this side of town even when it ain't that late. But anyway, was able to see a register open. Guy standing there looking like he was waiting just for me. And I promise you, he was waiting just for me. Y'all, I have never had a more extra cashier in my entire life. Had to call the manager over. Now, you know what makes this even worse? I got a sweatshirt on, and in the back it said, true worship for life. So I'm already identifying myself as a believer while I'm failing this test. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm right. And, and you know, when I thought about it, I said, well, you know, maybe if he had addressed it a different way, I'm not going to go into what the issue was, but maybe if he had addressed it a different way and showed some empathy, I might have been able to be like, okay, well, you know what? I'm really not in the mood, but fine, you know, whatever. But because I felt I was right, oh, yes, I'm calling the manager. I I'm doing that. And then I'm articulate. So, yeah. But I was failing the test. <sighs> I'm just saying that to say, when you already know that your spirit is troubled about something, when you already know that there are things that are heavy and, and weighty on you, please know that the devil never takes a day off. Never. He is always lurking and waiting for any opportunity to make you look like a fool, to make you embarrass God, always. So now here it is. Oh yeah, I'm Pastor Theodicia. Now I'm praying they don't have, they don't remember my face later on. If God decides to put my face on some stuff where a lot of people see it, or they happen to stumble across my Facebook page. Just pray that they don't even remember my name when I had to sign. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? I shouldn't have to be feeling like I want to crawl into a corner and, and wish amnesia on people because of how I responded to a test. And it's always easier after the test is over to see where you messed up. You know, they, the, as the saying goes, hindsight is 2020, and it is. After it's over, oh, you can see everything clearly. Now, I, I see it so clearly how everything was set up. But that's why we have to live in a constant state of awareness of the enemy. And see, the problem is a lot of us think that he's always going to send something big. Now, with this situation, what my family's going through with our loved one, oh, yeah, that's big. So the deception is in the trickery of it is, okay, I'm just focusing on that. But then here comes, as the scriptures say, those little foxes to spoil the vine. And I missed it. I, I missed it. I missed it. I don't care if I was right even. And I feel like I was, but I failed this test. I did. The best thing about it is that at least I have some remorse and it'll help me next time to put my flesh in better subjection 
to the spirit because of the embarrassment that I feel for failing the test. And that's why I felt like I needed to come on and I needed to share that because I never, ever, ever want to portray myself. And, and it's not that I have anything to prove. I'm not saying that, but I, I think it's important for people to see that those who God um, has gifted in leadership capacities, that they show that they are human and that they go through trials and that they haven't, you know, um, already reached some level of perfection. Because, I mean, in this body, we never will. Now, granted, there are some things that as time goes on and we mature that we should not still be struggling with. Now, until Jesus comes, I still should not be struggling with failing these kind of tests. I should get better and better. But I just want you all to see how it can happen. And I'm praying that this will help somebody else so that you don't fail a test because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. You really don't. And even when you go and apologize to some people because of their battles with unforgiveness, they may not even receive your apology. And then you got to deal with rejection after opening yourself up. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's such a snowball, you know, and it's better to not have to go and apologize, not because of pride, but because you did it right the first time. So um, I just uh, thank you all for, um, for listening to me <laughs> tonight. Um, I, I just, and even right now, I just feel like I just want to cry. Oh. Stress, y'all, they don't call it the silent killer for nothing. If you do not take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there, you will break. Do you hear what I'm saying? You will break. You will break. Because see, the devil is not like us. See, even the meanest person, even if they plotting and they manipulating and they trying to cause trouble, they take a break sometimes. They forget about it for a little while, do something else. But I tell you, that devil don't take no breaks. He doesn't. And he's not omnipresent. He's not like God. It's not that he's everywhere. He's not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. He's not omnipotent. He's not all powerful. But he is strategic. And he is organized. And those who are under him, they do what he tells them to do. They, they do what they have been trained to do. And they're always setting up opportunities for us to fail. Always setting up snares and traps for us to fail. And then if we don't have enough wisdom to admit our faults, the Bible says confess your faults one to another. That's why I'm talking to y'all. That's why I'm doing this right now. Because I got to get it off of me. And then repent, which goes beyond saying I'm sorry. That means, okay, I did something wrong. Okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. And I'm going to turn away from that. And then forgive myself. But so many of us, we never forgive ourselves. We feel like our best efforts are just trash when we fail. And we don't, we don't get back up. And that's when the devil takes the opportunity to continue stomping our head into the ground kicking dust into our face and our mouths and our eyes. So now we choking and we can't see and we can't really breathe. And yeah. So um, I just will, um, again, say thank y'all for listening. And um, I, I would not dare end this without at least briefly um, saying a prayer for anybody who is out there who's feeling like you've been failing tests and you're not worthy of God's love or his goodness and feeling like you can't get back up and try again. 
The devil is such a liar. Because see, let me tell you what makes you so special. Even though you have messed up over and over and over again, when you have a convicted heart and you repent to God and you really, really seek him to help you and you try your very, very best to do what's right, he's here like this. His hands are always open. But Satan, he messed up one time and that's it for him. So he's jealous. He's so angry. And even with me coming on and talking to y'all, don't y'all know I still got to watch my back? I have to watch my physical and spiritual back. So just know that you are worthy of love. You are worthy of being forgiven. All you have to do is just repent and ask God for it. Father God, in Jesus' name, God, I just thank you for this time. I thank you, God, for everyone who just decided to tune in and and listen to what I had to say and listen to me just ramble or just spill out everything that I'm feeling right now. I speak a blessing over everyone who will see this later and and the people who will see this at the right time that they needed to see it, God. God, I speak against self-unforgiveness. My God. My God, I speak against the spirit that tries to make us feel that your justice and your forgiveness is not good enough, that we have to execute another level of harsh justice on ourselves by beating ourselves up and not forgiving ourselves. Help us, God. Help us to know that you are our father and you love us. And you love us so much. You loved us so much that you would send your word in the flesh, in the form and body of Jesus Christ, to get acquainted with the struggle. And now he's making intercession for us because he knows how difficult it is. So God, we thank you for the forgiveness that we were able to access from Calvary through the blood of Jesus, through the sacrifice of Jesus. Help us to get back up, to confess our faults, to turn away and to really seek you for the help and the strength to let this flesh die daily. God, we thank you. We thank you for being so special to you. Thank you that you would count us to be so special. We honor you. We appreciate you. And even though sometimes our flesh and our actions say differently and do differently, we really love you. And we're really trying to show you through the way we live. It's in Jesus' mighty, mighty and redeeming name that I thank you. And it is so. So. I want all of you guys to have a wonderful night tonight. As always, I love you. Did you know that I love you? Did you know I love you? I really do. I really, really, really love you. So um, at Elson, we always say, please don't forget to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. It's the least you can do for all he's done for you. In Jesus' name, good night.